Hey guys, it's May the 4th. You know what that means. May the 4th be with you. Pew, pew, pew. Yep, today's May 4th, the day that I'm filming this, not the day it's going up because I am pre-filming some stuff. But for everyone who celebrates, may the 4th be with you because Star Wars is phenomenal. All right, so I am actually going to start a new video series on this channel, and this is something that I saw on Julie's channel. Her channel name is Pages and Pens. I will leave a link down below. She's one that I recently discovered, so I've been kind of binge watching some of her videos. And she has done a couple of videos that are book haul revisits. So she will go back and she will watch her previous book hauls, and then she will talk about where she is with those books. Has she read them? Has she not read them yet? Does she still own them? Did she unhaul them? And I thought that was a really cool idea. And I thought it'd be fun to go back and look at my previous book hauls from the same month that I plan on uploading the videos and kind of telling you where I am with those books as well. This also kind of puts other older books into my perspective and makes me rethink if I want to keep them because sometimes I may pick one up and go, I'm never gonna read this, I don't know why I still have this and then I can unhaul it. Or sometimes I'll pick one up and I go, I was so excited to read this, I'm still so excited to read this, I'm gonna put this on my nightstand and read it soon. So I think this is gonna be a fun project for me and as of right now I plan to do it monthly. So since I'm just starting it right now, I've been on booktube for two years now, so I am going to have to go back two years for this. So I'm going to start with May of 2015, which was my very first book haul ever. And then I'm going to also go to May 2016. So I'm going to have two different months from the past two years in this video. And then from here on out, if I want to go back another year next May, I'll go back to my book haul for this May. So I'm going back to 2015. I'll do all my 2015 ones first and then I'll do my 2016. I have two really tall stacks here right now. And I will leave both of those book haul videos linked down below. Please don't watch them. They're not very good. All right, starting with 2015, the very first book that I ever hauled on this channel is The Shack by William Paul Young. I still haven't read this. Mm, nope, I haven't. I got this at a library sale. And it's still one that I'm really excited to read. I really want to read it now because the movie just came out recently in the past couple of months. So I really, really want to read this book. This might be one that I annotate because this is pretty beat up. Um, there's you know a whole bunch of wear on it. Someone actually sketched their name on the inside here. There's uh, a sticker on the inside. Like I got this at a library sale for 10 cents, so I can't complain. Um, but someone wrote their name in here too. And I've been thinking about maybe starting to annotate some of my books. I've been looking at some books about defacing, which I think I'm going to do a discussion video about that because I have some thoughts on it. I'm still kind of watching some videos and doing that, but I think maybe here in another couple of weeks I'm going to have a video about that. But this might be something where I actually read it and annotate it as I'm reading it because I think this is going to affect me pretty good. I'm really excited to read it. I just haven't yet and yeah. Next up is The Book Thief by Marcus Huzak. I did read this. Yes, I did. I read this a year and a half ago, I believe, and um, I really liked it. I think I gave it four stars, I believe. I listened to the audiobook of this as well. The audiobook was really good. The narrator was wonderful. This is probably something I will reread in the future, and I'll probably actually physically read it. I did like it. It follows a young girl in World War II, and she lives in... Nazi occupied Germany, I believe. And um, she loves books, but books have been kind of banned or forbidden. So she actually steals books whenever she can find them. If someone um, has a secret library or she just finds them randomly, she will steal them. Really good. This is told from the perspective of death, which it was a little bit confusing for me because sometimes I felt like it got away from the narration and I was forgetting that it was supposed to be death telling the story, so I'd forget about it. Um, but I did really enjoy this. I will reread it one day because um, I, I think it's just something that I would want to go back to and kind of give another chance. But I did read it and I did like it. The next one is Alternative Atlanta by 
something Boswell, I think. I don't remember his first name. I don't have this book anymore. I never did read it. I just unhauled it because as I took another look at it, it was just something I wasn't really interested in anymore. Next up is The Psalm Killer by Chris Petit. I still have this. I have not read it yet. I have thought about unhauling this before, like just wondering if I was actually going to ever get to it. And then I looked at it on Goodreads and it has really good reviews and I've heard it's just really, really creepy and I love that. So I'm going to I'm gonna hang on to this and give it a read sometime hopefully this year um, because it does really interest me and it's a thriller and um, I've just, I've heard it kind of messes with your brain and I love that. Next up is London Bridges by James Patterson. This is a part of his Alex Cross series. I think it's book number eight or probably later than that. One of the books in there, I'm not to that point yet where I'm ready to read that book. And I actually did on a holiday, I gave it to one of my girlfriends who's in my book club because um, she was ready to read it. So don't have that one anymore. Next up is The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. Still haven't read this one either. I really need to though. It's pretty short and I've never read anything by Ernest Hemingway. So I think that I would want to read this soon just to see if it's something I would want to hang on to for the long haul you know give his writing a try see what I think and um, yeah so have it still haven't read it next up is their eyes were watching God by Zora Neale Hurston this one I unhauled this copy of it I have another kind of prettier copy that I picked up at Goodwill one day so I still have the book in general I just have a different copy of it now and I haven't read it yet same thing with Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. I got an abridged copy at the library sale and I ended up getting the full unabridged whole shebang copy from Book Outlet. So I did unhaul um, my smaller abridged copy. Haven't read that one yet either. Next up is a daily devotional and it is called My Utmost for His Highest. This is written by Oswald Chambers. This is not like a you know read front to back novel this is a daily devotional there's one devotional for every day of the year however i think i'm going to go ahead and unhaul this because i have a few daily devotionals in my collection and i think if i actually sat down and wanted to do one one year this would not be the one that i would pick up so i'm going to go ahead and unhaul this and let someone else enjoy it see getting rid of books as i'm filming good stuff and next up is The One and Only by Emily Giffen. I have not read this yet, but I do plan to. I really like Emily Giffen. She writes really nice, light, fluffy contemporaries, and I've liked everything that I've read from her so far. This I got at Goodwill, really nice um, hardback copy. It's almost in perfect condition. So, yep, still sitting on my shelf. Next up is Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. This is the first book in... Um, a series. I don't know what it's called. I think it's Beautiful Creatures series maybe. I don't know if it has another name or not. I still am really curious about this one. This is a paranormal YA kind of like a fantasy book and this was made into a movie. I heard the movie was terrible but a lot of paranormal movies are terrible so I'm not planning to see it or anything. I'm still really curious about this series though. Part of me is a little nervous going into it because I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. I'm afraid it's going to be too juvenile. I'm not really going to care about any of these people, but then at least I tried it. But then um, Penelope, who has a booktube channel, which is fantastic. It's Penelope's Picks, I believe. I'll leave her link down below too. Um, I love her videos. And she loves this series and she's actually reread them uh, more than once. So... I, that makes me want to dive in and see what I think and just kind of form my own opinion. So I do want to read this hopefully sometime this year so I can really see if it's something that I want. I toyed with getting the other books too, but I have backed off and said, nope, just read the first one, see what you think first before you go purchase anything else. Um, so yeah, still have it, still haven't read it, but it's still probably going to be on my radar soon. Next up is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. This book I have read and I have unhauled it. I did like it. I gave it four stars. Uh, it is something that so many people were, you know, raving about and saying it was like their favorite book of all time. And I enjoyed it. I didn't love it quite as much as everybody else did, I think. Like I said, I liked it. It just didn't completely hold my interest the entire time. It was a little bit of a slower read. So uh, yeah, but I have read it and I have since unhauled it. And the last book that I hauled in May of 2015 is The Heart of the Story by Randy Frazee. Haven't read this one yet either. This is a faith-based book. I just haven't read it and um, 
it's still sitting there waiting for me to pick it up. So the total numbers for the books that I hauled in May of 2015 is I hauled a total of 13 books. I've read two of them and I unhauled five of them. Six, I unhauled six. And I still have six of those books on my shelves that I am still excited to read. All right, let's get into 2016. This is a bigger stack because I discovered Book Outlet. All right, so the first one here is The Secret Place by Tana French. This is actually book number five in her Dublin Murder Squad series. I haven't started the series yet. I do have the first five books. So obviously I'm not ready to read this one because I have not read even the first one yet. Evening with this next book, The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. This is book number two in her Bone Season series. I have the first two books, haven't read the first one yet, so can't read this one yet either. Oh look, two more books in that same category. <laughs> I have the second two books in the Serena Legacy series, which is written by Anna Banks of Triton and of Neptune. The first one is of Poseidon, which I have as well. I have not read any of these books yet, but I do have the full trilogy. I do plan on diving into this trilogy this summer. And the next one is also the first in a series, so I am ready to read this one. I actually do plan to read this one this summer, and that is After by Anna Todd. This is One Direction fan fiction. I... I'm not a One Direction fan, but it's fine. Um, so I'm still wanting to read this. I have heard good things and some bad things about it too, so I'm not going into it with incredible expectations. I know that there's a problematic relationship in here. That kind of stuff doesn't really bother me all that much, so I just take it for what it is. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited to read this one this summer. It's definitely happening. This next one is kind of a happy coincidence, but it is Crossroads by William Paul Young, the same author as The Shack. So I have two that I hauled in the same month by him the past two years, and I have not read either one of them. Next one is The American Heiress by Daisy Goodwin. I do plan to read this this summer as well, and it's a mass market paperback, which I kind of hate, but, you know, whatever. It's, it is what it is. I accidentally bought a mass market paperback on Book Outlet. Still want to read it, though. The next one up is Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. Haven't read this one yet either, but I'm still really excited to. This is supposed to be kind of a psychological thriller. I think it's more towards a YA genre, so uh, we'll see. I've heard mixed things about this one, um, but I still I still do want to give it a try. Next one up is Wreckage by Emily Bleeker. Emily Bleeker is an author I've not read anything from, but I do have this one and I have another one of her books on audiobook that came up as like a daily deal on Audible, so I picked it up for cheap. And I've heard really good things about her writing, so I'm excited to see what her writing style is like and what her books are all about. And I picked this one up at Goodwill because it was a total cover buy. I absolutely love this cover. Next up is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I have not read anything by Neil Gaiman before, but I really want to. I've heard really amazing things about his books. This one, I think, is a little bit more of a middle grade type, and I've heard really good things about it. This also has illustrations in it, as you can see. Um, let's see if I can find another one. But yeah, I picked this up at Goodwill as well, and I, I really think it's um, a gorgeous book. I'm trying to find illustrations where I can actually stop. There we go. <laughs> illustrations in it too. So I really want to give Neil Gaiman's writing a try and see what I think, but I've heard very good things. Next up is The Husband's Secret by Liam Moriarty. I think I have almost all of her books now and I just need to keep reading. I've only read one so far, but I really liked it and I'm about to start reading Big Little Lies and I'm really excited for that one too. So yeah, but I have this one. Next up is Chain Letter by Christopher Pike. This was actually written in the 80s and I think kind of re-released in some newer covers recently. And yeah, I've, I think I have heard of this author back when I was reading R.L. Stein. It was kind of like the same time frame that they were both coming out with kind of like thriller books and stuff. And I loved R.L. Stein. So this might be a little bit nostalgic for me, but I do definitely want to give this one a try. And next up is... The Magicians by Love Grossman. This is book number one in the Magicians trilogy. I really need to get to this one because the TV show is on right now. I am recording the TV show. My sister is obsessed with the TV show. She hasn't read the books, but she's obsessed with the show and she keeps yelling at me to start watching it. And I'm like, not until I read the book. I have to at least read the first book before I can start watching that show. And she's like, get on it. What are you doing? So I have the first one. Um, I actually have the other two on my Kindle as well, so yeah, but I do need to um, get into this here pretty soon, just like everything else. Everything else needs to be read pretty soon. Okay, next up is Talon by Julie Kagawa. 
I hope I say that right. <laughs> uh, this is a dragon book, and this is the first book in her Talon series. I think this is still going on. Um, but this, I, there's, it feels like scales. Like, it's really cool. I love the way, like, I could just sit here and just do this all day. <laughs> it's really cool the way it feels. I don't know if the books are good or not. I've heard really good things about them. Um, and then I've heard okay things, but mostly good. So, yeah. But I, yeah, really, like, I'm just going to sit here. Don't mind me. All right. So, next up is one I actually read. Yay! <laughs> Monsters, a Love Story by Liz Kay. This was sent to me by the publishers in exchange for a review. And I loved this book so much. I do have a full review video up for this on my channel, so I'll go ahead and link that down below. But I read it last year and I absolutely loved it. It's an adult contemporary that follows a woman who is widowed. She is a poet as well. And then a big Hollywood studio wants to turn her book of poetry into a movie. And she forms a connection with the main actor who is both acting and producing this movie. It's very very, very good. I absolutely loved it. It was such a good surprise. I'd never heard of this book until the publishers contacted me. So when I read it and loved it, I was just so pleasantly surprised. I gave it five stars. I really loved it. And I it's still sitting on my shelf because I don't want to get rid of it. And next up is Land of Enchantment written by Lee Stein. This is a book that was also sent to me from the publishers. However, I have unhauled it. And I... I, it was okay. <laughs> it was a nonfiction book about Lee's time in an abusive relationship. And I only gave it three stars. It was fine. The writing was really, was really good. Uh, but the story was a little bit confusing. It jumped around a whole lot. And it was kind of, I spent a lot of time trying to piece together when things were happening because it wasn't laid out for me in that way. And that was a little bit um, difficult and I don't know. It wasn't my favorite. So I did give it three stars and I have since unhauled it. And the last one is China Rich Girlfriend by Kevin Kwan. This was also just sent to me unsolicited from the publishers. And I gave this one a try. I did it as part of my try a chapter tag that I did last year. So I read the first chapter of it and I didn't really like it. It was, um, I don't know. I just, I kind of spent the whole time like doing this. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if that is a an author that I'm going to be able to connect with really. And, um, yeah, but I mean, his books are successful. I think he's written, he's on his third book now. And, um, the first one was crazy rich Asians. This one was trying to rich girlfriend. And there's another one coming out if it hasn't been out already kind of along the same lines, but yeah. Um, so I gave that one a try, but I ended up not reading it and I did unhaul it. All right. So my totals for May of 2016 was I hauled 17 books. I read two of them, same as last year, and I unhauled two of them, which means I have 15 books unread, uh, chilling on my shelves waiting for me. So for the grand total for the past two years for the month of May, I hauled 30 books total. I read four of them. <laughs> I unhauled eight, and I still have 21. So starting off strong, starting off strong with my not reading what I'm buying game. But you know what? That's okay. And I think maybe even in these videos, as I'm, you know, revisiting what I hauled and what I didn't, I'm actually picking up these books again instead of the, them just sitting on my shelves. I think I'm going to pick one or two and put them on my nightstand and see if I can get to them maybe sooner than if they were still just sitting there. So I think that would be a fun challenge for myself as well. Just go ahead and put them on my nightstand so they're on my immediate radar. So the first one I'm going to go ahead and stick on my nightstand instead of sticking it back on my shelf is The Shack. This is short. This is something I really have been wanting to get to. And um, again, I'm going to talk about annotating this because I think it's something I'm going to do, but I'll do that in a separate video, you know, coming up here in a couple weeks. I'll try to, you know, do some thinking and researching and um, all that. But I'm going to stick this on my nightstand. I'm also going to put The Magicians on my nightstand as well. I would like to at least read this first book, see what I think so I can start the TV show. I don't know how the TV show is going as far as the books go. I don't know if it's going you know, first book is the first season, second book is the second season, but it has been renewed. It's still continuing on. I think it's going to be going on to their third season. So I really do want to read this and see what it's all about so I can start watching the show. So um, yeah, I am going to go ahead and put these two on my nightstand. Hopefully they will be on my TBRs coming up here soon too. Yay, that was fun. So 
that is a really good kind of reminder to myself to, you know, hey, you bought these books for a reason, you know, let's revisit them. Let's see if you want to continue to have them on your shelf still. Like I said, you know, I got rid of one already just in this video. So that's good. And then I have two that I'm going to put on my nightstand to hopefully move over to my red pile. All right, so I'm going to plan on doing this once a month. So for June, I'll be back to do that again, and I will go back and I will do June of 2015 and June of 2016, so I'll kind of have two years together. So this is going to be a fun challenge. I'm really excited about it. Let me know down below if you guys have any old haul videos from May of whatever years, and if you do, let me know so I can go and check them out so I can see guy what you guys were buying at that time. Maybe we got some similar books. And uh, let me know if you guys go through your old haul videos and look at them and see if you want to revisit or how often you kind of look at things that you bought and uh, reevaluate if you want to continue to have them on your shelves. I think it's kind of a good exercise for you. All right. I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day. Bye.